So in case you missed it in my previous video, I've been doing some upgrades to my Dell Precision T7500, and most recently I cloned the SSD that I had in that machine onto this larger SanDisk SSD. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the SanDisk SSD, remove some drives out of the computer, which is right over here off camera, and install a four terabyte hard drive as well. So the first step in this process is we're going to mount the SSD here into this metal caddy here. Now this metal caddy can accommodate up to two SSDs. There's two screw holes there. There's one down there and one up here. For this installation, we are going to be using the smaller screws right here. And I'm gonna mount it on the four screw points. So we're going to mount these two guys into my Dell Precision T7500. But first, we're going to have to remove some drives. Now, I already removed the SSD that was the main drive in this machine, and that was in this area over here. Now we have two drives left. One is an SSD, which is very simple to remove over here. And this is an, a SATA 2 SSD. And if you saw the previous upgrade videos I did on this machine, you'll know all about this and this actual case. Now, in case I didn't mention it before, not only did I clone the original SSD onto this, but I migrated all of the data from the SSD I just removed here and this hard drive onto this drive here. Now this one, we're just gonna unplug the SATA data and SATA power connectors, and we're gonna pull out this caddy. Now this is an old Western Digital 80 gigabyte hard drive. So, still works. I edited a lot of videos off of this drive in the past eight or nine months, so it worked perfectly. But um, I no longer need it because we're upgrading to a four terabyte drive. So the way these little caddies, these plastic caddies work, is you just kind of bend them back and you can pull the drive right out of there. So they're flexible and they have these little pins here on all the mount points on the drive and they fit into them. So we're going to put this one back. Now Pretty much I can mount these drives anywhere I want in the system. Even though they're labeled here, this is labeled as drive zero and then drive one and then drive two and then drive three. Now these are the cords that actually came with the machine itself, of course, as well as the power cords that connect to the power supply up here. But these SATA cords are the ones that came with the machine. And then this SATA cord here is one that I actually added on. So, because of the way things are configured, I don't really need to. I could remove these if I wanted to, but I'm just going to leave them in there. They're not doing any harm. But since in one of my upgrades to this machine, I put a SATA 3 PCI Express card in here, I want to use SATA 3 compatible cords. Now, these cords probably will work just fine, but since I paid extra for the cords and they're SATA 3 certified, I want to make sure that I do use them. So we're going to use these two bays here for the two new drives that I'm going to be putting in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this caddy out of here. It's the bottom one. And that one I'm going to put the SSD in. So hopefully I can show you this. The pins on this, like I showed you earlier, should match up to the holes on this. So. Let's see if we can get this situated in here. All right, I got this side in, and now I just have to bend it out a little bit. 
Hopefully you can see all that in frame, but basically what I was able to do is I was able to get all the pins, as you can probably see them here. There's one pin, there's another pin, there's one there, and there's one there. So everything is nice and tight and situated in there. Not going to be moving around like I had it mounted before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it back in here. And there we go. So next on tap, let's get the hard drive, the four terabyte hard drive in here. So the connectors are going to face me. They're going to be facing out. So let's just do this one more time. All the pins matched up very nicely. So let's just slide this in. There we go. Lock it into place. Now, as you'll notice, I'm short one SATA data connector, but the SATA power connectors should work. Hopefully, I don't have an issue here. But uh, again, because this is all pre-made and made to be very efficient and made to have the least amount of cabling in this machine extra, you know, everything's pretty tight here. So hopefully I'm going to be able to connect this power connector to both drives, but we'll see. We'll actually do that right now. So let's attach it to the SSD first. And hopefully you can see all this, but there we go. Power to the SSD, and then it's going to have to shift over to, let's clean that off over to the hard drive over here. And I think we're good here. Perfect fit. Nothing's too taut. Everything's very good. Now, this is a right angle connector here. And it's gonna be difficult to connect that to the SSD down here just because of the metal bar down here. But I should be able to connect it to the hard drive no problem. So let's just Maneuver this up here, connect that in as it snaps in. So here's a better view of the SATA 3 card that's installed in this machine. Connected to it are the hard drive that we had just installed, the SSD or what will be the SSD back here, and then this is the front panel hot swap drive connector bay. Now you might notice I do have an open SATA port there that I could use down the line if I have another SSD. Now I might want to change out these right angle cords here right now. They're not interfering at all with the graphics card here. So the last thing I need to do is actually just connect that to the SSD itself and that's going to allow a data connection from the SSD to the motherboard. There we go. Nice and tight, I kind of clipped it into the existing clips here and wrapped it around certain areas and it should be just fine. So I fired up the computer and you'll notice a couple of changes if you watched my previous video. Number one, obviously, there's only one drive recognized on here. We'll fix that in a second to have it recognize the four terabyte drive that we installed. Of course, this is my CD drive, DVD drive, and this is my external backup drive. It's a, an external hard drive that I have connected to the computer. So I'm in disk management here, and you'll notice the first thing that pops up here, it says initialize disk. You must initialize a disk before Logical Disk Manager can access it. Now that is the four terabyte hard drive that we have. So I'm just gonna do everything pretty much default here. It says GPT partition table, we're just gonna use that. So here you see 3,725.9 gigabytes unallocated. That's of course the four terabyte hard drive. And everything else here in disk management are all the disks that are attached to the machine. This is my main disk here, disk one. And then of course, this is the backup drive here. Now, if you joined me in my previous video on this upgrade, you'll know that I ended the video with my main drive having several partitions on it. Starting off here with the system reserved, then having the main partition here with my operating system on it, and then followed with the recovery partition. But what has changed is I had a whole bunch of space 
toward the other end, or actually toward the right, and that's very important here, toward the right of the recovery partition that was unallocated space. It was over 300 gigabytes of space, and that's on an SSD, mind you, so you definitely don't want to lose that. Now, instead of actually just making a secondary partition, which is the way I left the previous video, I was able to merge it with the main partition here, so I don't have any partitions on this drive other than you know what's system reserved in the recovery partition but everything you know all my SSD usable space is right here now unfortunately you cannot do that on disk management right here which is the Windows application to manage the partitions on your disk or disks installed on your machine and the reason because of that is because the main partition had the recovery partition directly to the right of it. And again, that's very important because this is a very linear program. So I had the unallocated space to the right of that. So I wasn't able to jump this par recovery partition through disk management here. So if you look, if I right click here, you'll see you have several options. You can extend a volume and you can shrink a volume. I could not extend the volume using disk management again because that unallocated space was to the right of the recovery partition. So what I ended up doing is going to this mini tool partition wizard free. Mini tool partition wizard free is a way to repartition drives in a way that disk management can't. And I definitely recommend it. I was doing a lot of research and this was the only tool I could find for free for home users. So let's just launch that program here. I'm gonna launch the application here and you'll actually see what I'm talking about. So you have a way here to manage your partitions on the machine, which is a little more full featured than disk management. So definitely I recommend this. I'm using mini tool partition wizard free 9.0 for home users. So anyway, the next step in the process here, now that we have the main SSD squared away is to get the four terabyte hard drive formatted. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click on new simple volume. And it's going to take me to the new simple volume wizard here. I'm going to hit next. Now, of course, I'm in no need of partitioning up this drive. I want the entire amount available. So I'm just gonna make sure everything is used. You could make a minimum partition of eight megabytes. I'm using the entire space here. As you can see, this is the maximum disk space in megabytes. And that's what I have here, which is going to be my new simple volume. I'm gonna hit next here. And then I can assign a drive letter. Now, if we go back here, we'll notice that we have drive C, which is my main drive, and then drive F, which is my Seagate backup drive. I usually use drive D for my data drive. I call it my data drive, and it is already assigned drive D, so that's good. So assign the following drive letter D, hit next, and I'm gonna use all the defaults on this, except I'm going to name it data. And then I'm gonna hit next here and click finish. And you'll notice up here, it's formatting the drive and it might take a couple seconds. There we go. So we now have, as you can see down here, data D drive, and we have a full partition here of the entire space. And it's showing up right here, all free space. 3.63 terabytes free of 3.63 terabytes. So now I'm ready to go. This machine is up and running the way I want it to be. The only thing I do need to do is import a lot of data off of my old machine, which has a lot of raw footage for videos for this channel. So in the last video, I showed you the difference in speed between the SATA 2 with the old SSD and SATA 3 with that same old SSD. Right now I'm showing you the difference in speed between the old SSD running in SATA 3 versus the SanDisk, the brand new SSD that I just installed, also running on SATA 3. Both of these SSDs are running on the SATA 3 card, the PCI Express card that I installed on this computer, 
but this is the difference in speed between the two drives. So on the left, again, the older SSD is outpaced in every way by the new SSD on read and write speeds by a considerable margin. And the total score is over twice as fast as the old drive. So I think I'll be pretty happy with this upgrade. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you wanna help out this channel, you can give me a thumbs up, you can share this video on your favorite social media platform, or you can actually join my Patreon, all of which is greatly appreciated. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.